People are still coming on board. Okay, it's 6.01. We have just started the recording of the governing CV Fiber regular governing board meeting, 10 May 2022. So let's call the meeting to order. Jeremy, let me know when you uh, come up with a quorum. <laughs> okay, Let's see if I can remember. I, sure I think we've there. got 13. I think we've got 13. Very good. Let's call that a quorum then. So are there any additions or changes to the agenda? I actually have uh, one, but I'll do that after I do public comments. Are there any public comments? Oh, wait, five. Okay, somebody has a hand up. Alan, yes, sir. Uh, this pertains to the agenda, so <clears throat> you're doing public comments now. No, go ahead, Alan. What, what do you want to add? I just wondered if we were going to maybe have time to just make sure that we all know the subsidy program that the Biden administration announced today for private telecoms, for-profit telecoms to provide services to low-income people. It's a good program for people receiving it and also for the telecoms. And it strikes me as it's a real problem for us because I don't think we qualify, but that's what I would like to know. <clears throat> okay, Jeremy, do you have something to add to that or something else on that line? Uh, yeah, at some point in the meeting, I'd like to introduce the alternate from, or the, the alternate, the new alternate from Plainfield, uh, Barry Ivey, uh, who's on the call. Uh, and he's been to a couple of meetings, but not a governing board meeting. So I would like to introduce him to the board. Yeah, that, that's that's exactly my addition to the agenda. Um, okay. So, I, uh, Siobhan, go ahead, please. I was going to say the same thing. I think Jim Guest is my alternate. Okay, so let me let me let me do this then. In in the spirit of what both of you are coming to, uh, is there anybody here that this is their first meeting as a delegate or an alternate? Can you can you raise your hand electronically and I'll call on you just to introduce yourself quickly. And then I would also like to add, um, ask each of you to please send me an email so that we can arrange a time where we can chat for a while and I can let you know what's going on and 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 you know we we can just talk. I don't want to take I don't want to take that time now from the meeting, but we can do that offline if you'll send send me an email. So I'm going to go down the list here. Jim, I don't have a last name. Jim, do you want to introduce yourself? Are you a you're delegate muted. or a new alternate? Jim, you're muted. Okay, Jim, we'll give you we'll give you an opportunity. There you go. Oh, there you go. go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. I'm. I apologize for being late. Um, I went to join and then I found out I needed to have Teams, which I didn't have on my iPad. So <laughs> I'm all set to go here. I'm Jim. I'm an alternate. I live in the Reservoir Road, uh, just a ways beyond Dick's Reservoir in Orange. And uh, I was asked to be an alternate and very pleased to do it. Um, I served as an educator for 50 years and uh, now I'm pretending to be retired. Excellent. Excellent. Thank Welcome, you, Jim. Jim. Please follow up and send me an email so we can talk. Got it. Um, and, and, and also, would you be able to uh, uh, put the spelling of your last name in the chat so we can include that in the minutes properly? OK. We can do Thank that. You. All right, I'll call on Barry Ivey. Good evening, everyone. I'm Barry Ivey. I'm an alternate for Plainfield. Um, I've been a resident of Plainfield almost 40 years now. My uh, background was IT. Um, I worked for both National Life and Blue Cross Blue Shield in their IT departments and last February retired. So um, I was looking forward to uh, getting into and being the delegate for uh, Plainfield with CV Fiber, which interests me immensely. <laughs> Fantastic. Like I said, please send me an email. We'll talk offline and you're hired. <laughs> so, Jerry, do we want to run around the room real quick so that the new people can get a sense of who we are as well? Or is that too much time out of the meeting? Do you think? That, that, that's, a, that's a lot of time. We're, 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 we're already an hour and a half scheduled. 
I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be overruled on this if, if, if folks feel otherwise. Okay. Um, so we have a um, meeting. We went through public comment meeting minutes. Um, have folks yeah, had an opportunity so to go through the minutes? I sent them out incorrectly like 15 minutes ago and then only sent out the revised. So, I mean, I'm fine with voting off as it is, uh, but perhaps if there, maybe, maybe the way to do it is if there are any objections, maybe we'll defer it to the next meeting or we can vote on it now if there are no objections. Yeah, let, let, let's defer to the next meeting because I doubt that, it, that folks have had the opportunity to go through it and, and that's fine. Um, I'll also ask that everybody please put yourself on mute if uh, if you're if you're not talking. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift gears now and hand it over to Alan because this is our annual meeting where we appoint officers and um, I believe with the exception of treasurer and with that I want to say thank you, Phil, for all the excellent work you've done over the past, I don't know how long it's been, but you 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 have really helped turn this organization around. You know, the previous treasurer was terrible, I'm telling you. So you 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 did a phenomenal job. Thank you so much. Uh, so with with the exception of treasurer, we have the other the other officers are um, all uh, willing to continue in their position. So that's that's uh, Jeremy is the clerk. Uh, Siobhan is the vice chair and myself is the chair, just to put that information out. But I'll turn it over to Alan now and go on mute. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. So the floor is now open for nominations for chair of the CV Fiber Board. Are there any nominations? I nominate Jerry Diamantides. Siobhan has nominated Jerry Diamantides. Are there I any second. other nominations? Second, who's the second? Tim Sullivan. I don't think we second. I don't think we have to, but I don't think you have to, but <clears throat> sometimes nice to get them. <clears throat> if necessary, seconded by Tim Sullivan. <clears throat> Are there any other nominations? No other nominations. <clears throat> if not, I declare the <clears throat> uh, Nominations closed, and we will now vote on the nomination. Uh, is there anybody opposed to the single candidate we have? Otherwise, we'll have a unanimous vote. Everybody is OK with a unanimous vote for Chair Jerry Diamantides? So be it. Jerry, you have been elected chair of the CV Fiber Board for the current year. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Much you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Go ahead. Job, you can get back to work and do the Thank other you. officers. Uh, <laughs> back to work, you, do the other officers. Oh, you. All right. OK. OK. So. <laughs> so for <laughs> vice chair, uh, do we have any nominations for vice chair? Nomination on Paracone for vice chair. OK, that Thank was you. Jeremy. And Tom, was that a second? Yes. Okay, excellent. Are there any other nominations? I hear none, I see none. Okay, well, let's take the vote. All in favor of Siobhan continuing on as vice chair? Uh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Siobhan, thank you very much for continuing as vice chair. Let's let let let's, let's move on to clerk. Do I hear any nominations for the clerk? I nominate, I nominate Jeremy you. Mack. A second. Okay, that was RD that nominated Jeremy with Siobhan as second. Are there any other nominations for clerk? If anyone else wants the clerk position, I would not be sad about that. <laughs> but I will continue if, if there are no other candidates. <laughs> okay, let me ask that again. Any other nominations for clerk? Hearing none, let's take a vote. Uh, 
So <laughs> all in favor of Jeremy Matt continuing as clerk. Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we have three officers moving forward as planned. Um, we uh, oh, go 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 ahead, Chuck, please. We, we have a question that is a clerk appropriate question in the chat. Uh, John Morris is asking, uh, I'm at the Marshfield Town Hall because the select board is running a meeting about Marshfield ARPA funds. Unfortunately, the connection here seems to be even worse than at my house. And he wants to know if that will impact quorum. Jeremy, what do you think? I don't believe so at this point. I, th I think. I think we yeah, at, at this point we've got enough. I will do a, a okay. better count and then, for them, but. OK, John, and your second question, it looks like Ray followed up in chat with you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Good luck at the meeting. Good, Thank you. good luck at the meeting. Thank you. OK, so I just wanted to make one more uh, statement since we're here about the about the treasurer. Um, we have a uh, a posting out on Front Porch Forum uh, for a treasurer to, to replace Phil. We also have a uh, we already have a candidate um, that we that we have been talking to. Um, so I, I'm I'm hoping that we will be able to fill the position um, for our next uh, board meeting to make the appointment. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. And one more time, thank Phil for all of his work. Al, wait, Phil, before you're done, how about giving us a treasurer's report? Question. Oh, oh go ahead, Linda. Uh, when is the deadline for uh, uh, people to apply? For treasurer, uh, do we have a hard deadline? That's a question. Yeah, we kind of do. The um, we're planning to make an appointment at the next board meeting, so that's June twelfth or June fourteenth. Anybody have the second Tuesday of uh, June? I think it might be the fourteenth. So if we have more than one candidate, we will go through okay. a process to to select and make a recommendation. Yeah, similar to, similar to what we've done, um, we have a we have a process envisioned that's that's similar to what we did for the uh, executive director. Well, we're we not expect we're not expecting as many folks to be interested. You have a committee. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Go ahead, sir. I just wanted to mention that we did document the process sort of generically the recruiting process for for CV fiber so we can uh, we, we did that when we when we recruited for the uh, um, executive director position so we could just reuse that that process as our standard uh, but we're but I mean just so everybody's informed we're not doing a LinkedIn we're not doing a nationwide search where we're, we're keeping this local front porch forum and 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 you know within the uh the for the most part within the cv fiber certainly within vermont um okay uh treasurer's report phil please okay i'm going to share my screen i think uh do you see my screen i don't think you do not yet sir huh Wonder why? Nope. Okay, I'm not sharing my screen. Um, I could share my screen for you if that would help. Uh, sure. And I think I have the treasurer's report here. Hold on a second. Yeah, I was uh, going to share. I was going to share the summary uh, okay, by funding the, source. The bottom of the page is it? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually hold it. I think it's coming. It's coming back here. Let's try this. I think I got it. No, you have it. Keep going. There it is. Yeah, just that. If you could make that larger. Well, probably. You know, something up here. That's too large. Yeah, OK, see. well, we'll just go with this. Uh, this is the. Uh, 
a summary financial uh, reports. It's a grant. It's the uh, cash summary by funding source. Uh, on the left hand side, you have all the, the different funding sources, the different grants. Uh, um, the amount of the grant uh, um, funds available to draw down and then uh, spending by year. Um, and if you in the under the uh, 2022 20, column, the right hand column, uh, last column in that section is the checking account balance for those funds. They are all in one account. We currently have 641,665 uh, in the checking account. And um, you can see all the different funding sources where they're, uh, where the funds are from. Uh, if, as we move to the right, there are a couple new columns. Uh, we have a drawdown in transit. We've requested the funds. We haven't received it. That's $806,000. Uh, it wasn't in two seconds before the meeting and haven't seen it come in since. So I'm any moment now, I'm sure. Uh, the next column are uh, transactions pending. Now the transactions pending are an interest is an interesting grouping. Uh, there are several types of transactions pending. The first is uh, a um, invoice in the amount of six hundred twenty thousand six fifty uh, for uh, uh, planning services with NRTC. It's a large, you know, that's been approved. Uh, uh, by the executive committee uh, with a caveat, I it get held until we have the money in the account to pay for it, which seemed like a good thing to do. Uh, the line above it, the 129,432 uh, and the 96,352, those are two amounts for uh, um, basically for poll inventory. Uh, uh, those invoices are in. The vendors owe us uh, some more details, so they have not been approved uh, by uh, um, by David uh, until he finishes dotting the I's and crossing the T's, make sure they've done what they need to do. Uh, so those are the pending transactions. The last column is, are the funds remaining in the in the uh, in the grants. Uh, as you can see, we have 2.1, uh, 2, 185,000 uh, available uh, to spend. And I imagine those will be spent down uh, fairly quickly. I, um, so that's the quick nickel overview of what's happening. Any questions on this report? I, ha I have a question, Phil. Yeah, it's it's R D. Um, yep. Is um, the matching grants that are being made available to us do uh, for um, uh, to match the grant the ARPA grants from towns? Does that sum appear anywhere in your spreadsheet yet? Not, and not when it yet. does appear. Where will it appear? Where can we look for that? That's a great question, and I guess the next treasurer will figure that out. Uh, no, um, <laughs> uh, it, depends, it really depends on how, how I think how they're going to be used. My guess is they'll be under a special section called matching. Uh, Ray, what are your thoughts? Um, um, RD, what I'm thinking is that um, it's to appear in the balance sheets here uh, when we have uh, MOUs executed. Yeah. If then we have a firm commitment. What the letters of commitment are, are doing is that they're satisfactory enough for the broadband board to make a decision that will match them. And we subsequently have to do a contract, an MOU with the towns uh, that uh, binds both of us with regard to that and also would result in the, in the funds coming forward from the broadband board at some date. Uh, but they'll be reflected, they'll be reflected in, the, um, in the balance sheets uh, going forward after that point. Um, is this a pass through? Will those um, sums be reflected in our um, in our accounts, or are they? Is it all coming out of um, the VCDB? Yeah. So all the funds, all the funds will reside with uh, CV Fiber, 
And oh, they, they will reside with CV Fiber. They will reside with CV Fiber. Okay, uh, but that's not the full 1.5. No, it, only it, it, only okay. what's managed. So, so, so thus far, we have $153,000 that have been we have letters of commitment for that will right. be matched by an additional $153,000. And um, we will wind up uh, uh, having a separate accounting for, not necessarily an account, but an accounting for each community because we're obligated to spend all of that uh, money, the matching funds right. and the commitment uh, in that town. Okay. So that's going to put another couple of lines in this. That would put another couple of lines in this spreadsheet. Yes, another couple yeah. of rows. Yep. Got it. Thank you. I expect that will be the duty of the next treasurer to figure that part out. Yeah. I would envision some additional rows. I mean, you know, th this spreadsheet that was actually created uh, before we had Bonnie, we had Bonnie uh, doing the work, uh, and uh, uh, she, you know, she she maintains the books in QuickBooks, and this is really sort of duplicative. Uh, the next treasurer may decide to uh, you know you pr present reports for it out of QuickBooks. But, but RD, let me uh, assure you and every and everybody else that there will be full transparency, and we will be able to follow the town money and the town match as to where it came from and where it goes for each town. So there will be there'll be full accountability for that for every town that that shares their ARPA funds with us. We just haven't figured out how to do it yet, uh, but we will when the time comes. Yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, any other questions on 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 the financial uh, portion of the report? Hearing none, um, just a couple of the comments. Uh, payroll is up and running. Uh, uh, first payroll went through without a hitch. It's uh, under control. Uh, all, you know, all the other details, taxes, uh, benefits, et cetera, all seem to be up and running. I haven't heard any complaints. Um, I'm not seeing anybody shaking their head. Um, the compilation report, uh, just an, another round of questions went to the um, accountant uh, earlier today, and um, I imagine she'll get those turned around fairly quickly. So the compilation report uh, sh should uh, should be out. Uh, and uh, if there are no other questions, um, I'll wrap up right there. Any, any other questions for Phil? Phil, thank you again, as always. Uh, let me move on. I just wanted to make a, uh, a brief update on the Waitsfield Telecom uh, contract that, that had been uh, approved pending negotiations by the governing board, uh, negotiations to be performed by the uh, executive committee and, and approved by the executive committee. We are expecting um to be able to make that approval on thursday um they, there's uh there's a, a final document a final final document uh that we are expecting to see and as soon as we see that document we expect to be able to bring that to the executive committee um the only hitch is that the person with document control at waitsfield seems to be on vacation until next week um but we're tr we're trying to get it out of them um, this week so that we can we can take care of that on Thursday. So we will have a Waitsfield Telecom on board, hopefully, um, after our next executive committee meeting. Uh, any questions about that one? Jeremy? Jeremy, Matt, your hand is up. Yeah, not, not a question about that, but I did have a question. Um, if no one else has questions, then I'll ask it. Well, I see John Walters has his hand up. Yeah, um, we were going to, uh, uh, for those who need reminding, we are doing two front porch forum posts per month. Uh, we're supposed to be doing the first one in the next several days. Um, and uh, the two topics in that update are the WCV, the Waitsfield contract and the search for a treasurer. Um, uh, is there any reason, should we pull the Waitsfield announcement from Front Porch Forum? Because that will probably go out, that may go out before, in fact, 
the current plan is for it to go out before the Thursday night executive committee meeting. We don't like to post things on Fridays. Yeah, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, so my suggestion was, and I, and I got back to John after Chuck uh, uh, inspired that uh, particular move, and that was that um, we we announced the ARPA commitments that we have in order to inspire other, motivate other towns to take action, and put in the uh, and also announced the treasurer uh, position uh, opening. And so that's the direction I'd like to see us go in. And um, hopefully by the executive committee's meeting, we can have that all sorted out. But of course that's yeah. Thursday too, right? We, we certainly don't want to announce in advance of the executive committee making making the final decision. So we, we, we definitely don't want to do that. Sorry about the timing for that, John, but that's, uh, that's the, the way yeah. it seems to be rolling. Siobhan had her hand up. Go ahead, Siobhan. I just wanted to mention when you talk about the ARPA funds, be sure to mention about the matching funds and that there's a time limit and it's a done deal. There's a set amount and once it's gone, it's gone. It's first come, first serve. We're going to light a fire under them. It's in the first two paragraphs. Well, well said. Well said. Chuck? Yeah, I'll just call out that while it's not ideal to post on a Friday, um, it's also not a deal breaker. It just means that in traditional you know, email marketing, uh, you don't typically see as much engagement on, on Fridays. I don't know if that holds true for Front Porch Forum. We have no data points on that um, that are reliably statistically significant to, to assess it one way or the other. It could be that in Vermont, we're Vermonters and we do things a little bit differently than everyone else. And maybe we do check our front porch forums on Fridays. I don't know. Um, so we we can make the choice, you know, uh, at, in the executive committee, if it turns out that um, we are going to have that signed and ready to go, uh, whether we want it to go out on Friday or maybe wait till Monday or Tuesday to get it out. Okay, and John, we'll get you the information you're requesting right away. Uh, if you don't, if if you if you haven't already gotten it in in the chat, uh, Siobhan, I see your hand is still up. You have something? No. Okay. Um, I'd like to move on to the executive director's report. Uh, is Janiel Janiel, are you I, on? I sure am. Can you see me, Jerry? Can, I can, cannot can I see. You. Real, I, oh, there you go. Yes, I, I see you now. Picture. Yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. I just wanted to ask, there's, there's a person uh, named Ted as guest who is on the call, and I didn't know if you were uh, associated with uh, one of the towns or if you're a member of the public, and if you are, if you'd like to identify yourself for inclusion in the minutes, or if you'd rather uh, remain as you are, that's fine as well. Ted, Ted's a member of the public. I actually invited him to this to this meeting. I see. Okay. Uh, but But he can speak for himself. Okay. I, did, I just wanted to make sure that I had everyone listed properly for the minutes. Okay, Janiel. So this is Ted. I'm here. Um, I just recently moved to Williamstown and I am following the activities of CV Fiber very interestedly because I have DSL. So. <laughs> I see. Well, welcome, Ted. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Thank you, Ted. Uh, Janiel, the floor is yours. Hi. Um, so, We've uh, we have signed agreements with uh, very key vendors who are doing Make Ready. That's uh, Karen Kotecki and Mission Broadband for poll work. Uh, the applications are in the process of being submitted now to VTrans for right of way work and uh, about a thousand polls to WEC. Uh, so this is going to be the summer of Make Ready because of material lead times and certain limitations on cabinets that we might not get um, as quickly as we imagined, we're going to focus on make ready work, uh, right of way work, easement work, and get everything that we can get built, built when we can get it built. So the, the push has been in the past few weeks, um, we've signed notices to proceed and started on those scopes of work. So that's a huge focus <laughs> and uh, in moving in moving forward beautifully. The second focus that uh, that I'm looking at is a marketing plan. And Chuck and I have calls tomorrow actually with Waitsfield's partners. Um, 
And we're also talking to other CUDs about what their marketing plans look like. So, so uh, we have to get subscribers. That's important. Uh, so that's a that is a very important focus as well as make ready this summer, um, building up the marketing plan, building up communications with the community. Um, so those those things are those things are the big big ticket items as far as. Uh, as far as I can tell, that's where a lot of focus is going to be. We have a materials RFP out in the world <laughs> and comments, comments, um, questions were closed at five o'clock today. Answers are due at the end of the 12th. So we have a couple days to get our answers out. And then we propose where we're going to subject to successful negotiations, have the bids um, awarded. And I say bids because we expect that there are going to be several scopes within this materials RFP. It includes trans, tra um, it includes transportation and warehousing um, and supply chain as well. So that, that RFP will proceed, uh, we'll get materials. We're also working on a construction RFP. Uh, so that we can get bids for construction scopes of work, um, because construction will begin if all goes as planned this year. So those are the RFPs. Um, and we are expecting to have our high level design from NRTC by next week. We're shifting a few things, uh, adding some cabinets, um, and that might impact sequence. Um, so that that is happening as we speak. Uh, the the finalizing of uh, business plan as well, financial plan with with NRTC. So those are the those are the big things. Um, ARPA, um, ARPA. Everybody's mentioned this. It, it's great news. Yes, we have only until September fifteenth, or towns have only until September fifteenth to get funding in. We can get up to one point five million dollars matched from B C D B. So that's that, that we already have 300, 306,000 extra dollars when you look at the money that's come in from the three towns plus the uh, the matching funds. So RD, Allen, Linda, the, the delegates for those towns, Cabot, Waterbury, Worcester, have done great work and we are very lucky to have this matching fund. So that's what I had in mind for sharing. If there's anything else anyone would like to address or ask, I'm happy to. Let me add one thing, Janiel, and that is, and I, it's sometimes I forget which meeting I've been in. Uh, our construction eligibility application has been approved. So we are eligible to receive construction funds should we be able to jump through the remainder of the hoops that they've lined up for us. Yes. So and that, that's actually a good, that, that's a good thing. That's an important first step. Absolutely. And now we can <clears throat> get, we are eligible to submit our full application to get the money. So this, this is great progress. Yes. Questions for Janiel? Okay. Excellent. Um, I have you. a question. Um, Jerry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to raise my hand here. I don't, Oh, sorry, RD. Mind. Go go ahead, sir. I don't see it on my icon. Um, um, uh, Janiel, once again, very briefly, um, I don't know if it's too big an accounting problem or a reporting problem to um, supply the towns with some detail about what activity is actually taking place in their towns, um, I don't know, month by month or every couple of months. Um, um i that would certainly be useful and if activity is taking place in a town that hasn't made an arpa kick in i think that would also add to the incentive if people knew there was actually something going on in their town um uh that <laughs> gives them a ray of hope in dark times yeah no comment thank you yes absolutely so here's what i'm thinking and and um and there there could be other ways of addressing this as well town by town but we've been in discussions um and by we i mean uh um jerry and ray and christopher and david and myself about doing a district webinar every say couple of months um the first date we're looking at is maybe around june 22nd um where we will give updates to the community 
uh, about what's happening, what they can expect. So uh, do you think that a district webinar where towns were all invited to that district webinar would be a good approach? Um, we can also take this offline. You're welcome to contact me directly if you have other specific ideas so that we don't take up meeting time, but that's what we had in mind. Well, let me add one thing to that, uh, Janiel, to address get R.D. Get back oh. on the, uh, on the Go call. ahead, R.D., I'm sorry. Okay, somebody's somebody's got horrible internet. I wonder who that might be. Could be me. Um, one of the things that's happening here, and this is for, for, for everybody to understand, is that as we move through this design process, things begin to gel a little bit more about what's going to happen where and when, even though, even though it's still fuzzy because there are many unknowns, especially delivery times on materials, availability of materials. We still don't know. Uh, what the construction teams are going to look like and how available they're going to be. But things are starting to gel more where we'll, we can we can at least talk with with a little bit more clarity, clarity about what's going to move forward and how things are going to unfold. Uh, and we're only starting to see this with some clarity. It was all uh, quite dark uh, prior to this because we simply didn't have the information and and you know, we didn't have any answers. And, and now we're starting to, to accumulate some answers with a lot of caveats. Um, but just to let everybody know that we're not withholding anything, it's just that there hasn't been anything gelled yet, but we are starting to see that happen. Linda, please go ahead. Uh, the select board and Waterbury is interested in knowing what the process is that um, they need to go through to move to get funds appropriated and given to whoever. Um, so it'd be really good to have kind of a outline or timeline or process uh, a description of what where we go from here now that I've got a commitment letter. Um, so that I could contact them. They are sitting on the edge of their seats waiting to find out what the next steps are. I told them the MOU was next, um, but there's no timeline on it or anything as far as I can tell. Thank you. Yep, uh, un understood. I think that's that's something that we should we should have standardized, make it available and 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 post it even on the website so that we have it, we know it, we can refer to it. I think that's a that's a very good idea. Sounds like finance committee work um, to me. So we'll we'll get to we'll get that on a on a single piece of paper um, so that it's available. But please understand, Linda, the difference between the ARPA funding and the actual lighting of fiber and being able to get one gig to your house. There's a there's a timeline in between there. But the but the the ARPA funding is certainly a, a an important an important step that we can take advantage of uh, in the very near future. Uh, I'm ready to go to the communications committee report unless anybody has anything else for our executive director. Chuck, please. I'm sorry, my internet just cut out for a second. What is the question? You're up. I, 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 I put you on for a communications committee report without having any specific items because you're always enlightening us with the things that are going on. So it, it would be great to hear. Sure. And hopefully we'll be stable here. I'm just watching the graph of my Starlink and it's doing this. Uh, so <laughs> um, we uh, we are now transitioned to doing two postings a month. Um, and so uh, we have seen a great deal of engagement uh, by adding that second post. Um, we see a lot more people coming to our website as a result. And, and so uh, that's great. I would say, uh, you know, Linda continues to be our champion in terms of getting website updates uh, onto the website. Thank you, Linda. Uh, John continues to be our champion in terms of writing all the content we put out Thank you, John. Uh, beyond that, uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to field them.
Well, I, I, I just want to put one thing out there. Thank you, uh, Linda, for getting that RFP out. And, and in, in the time frame that we did, that was, uh, that was much appreciated. Thank you for that. Uh, anything else for Chuck and the communications committee? Because I, I know that Alan, Alan has, uh, has some grant policy discussion and possible action that we're, that we're geared up for. Alan, please. Uh Oh, R.D., go ahead, sir. Uh, just uh, just very briefly, Jerry, just to remind you that I have stepped down from the communications committee. So you might want to look around for a another a new board member um, who to replace me. If the if the communications committee feels it needs another member, just wanted to remind you that's my comment. OK, thank you. And thanks for putting that out there for everybody. Go ahead, Chuck. I will say we will, of course, entertain anybody else who uh, wants to come help us on our journey uh, with the one caveat that uh, we were starting to find it a little bit difficult to maintain quorum. Um, and so, you know, uh, it, please, if you're going to join us, be ready to join us. OK, Alan, sir, I'm going to pass the uh, pass it over to you. Go ahead. OK, so this is. Uh, <clears throat> This is all about the grant policy that came up at the last board meeting, and I had to apologize for not getting the uh, <clears throat> the actual old policy and new policy out to the board for everybody to take a look, look at to see what's happening. So I did send copies of both of those, the old policy and the new policy, uh, the end of last week, I think, and I, <clears throat> I hope you all got them, had a chance to look at it and had any questions, uh, you can bring them up. Let me just just give you a general overview of the process of this <clears throat> policy. If you look at the current policy, you'll see it was adopted <clears throat> on July 9th, 2019. And that was indeed a time when uh, <laughs> we really didn't know what we were doing. And if we got a if we got a grant or a contribution from $50 or $50, we were really happy and we just put it in the bank. And it didn't seem necessary to come up with a very complicated policy at all, or one that was more specific. So what we did back in 2019 was come up with six points that tried to create some structure for how we could receive grants and actually try to, uh, I don't think we had a bank account then, how we could deposit them and how we could spend the money and how all that would happen. And if, if you read that current policy, you, I, I'm going to guess you laugh because it is pretty funny for me to read it now. Uh, it, 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 it just doesn't tell you much. So what Ray uh, did was to come up with a revised policy, which is the one that we'll be voting on tonight. That, as you can see, it's shorter, it's uh, much more succinct, and it kind of gets to the point of how <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a cold. It gets to the point of how we're now operating generally uh, through an executive committee that's involved in a lot of the um, the nitty gritty stuff uh, from day to day, and that involves grants as well. So let me let me turn it over to Ray. Ray, do you want to give a general explanation of how you see this policy working, or do you think it's self-explanatory? Well, I think it might be. Fairly self-explanatory. I think you gave a great overview of that, and and that is that um, it, this is this kind of activity that it would fall kind of naturally under the executive committee with all its day-to-day -day, um, detailed work, and um, and also aligns with the processes by which we can follow the uh, accounting and auditing of these particular activities, and we're going to get more into that in the next uh, next bit when we take up the financial control guidelines, which is the next um, uh, thing on the agenda. But what you see here is the executive committee approves a submitter. Who's, who is the, actually going to do the writing and drafting of this? Who's going to apply for it um, and approves the submission of all grants? So people don't roguely go off and and, um, and do this and also the execution of the grant awards. And it says that the governing board chair will be the one who actually signs the grant award. Uh, there's a, a, a documentation that goes back and forth, typically between the state and, and us, for example. And then there's a, a part here that talks about um, 
the acceptance of the work and the approval of the uh, of an invoice uh, under the grant. And you heard earlier, for example, when Phil was giving his report, when he talked about poll inventories and people, and we had invoices pending, but yet David Healy hadn't yet accepted the work. Okay. And so we don't, we're not going to pay somebody unless we've accepted the work. And so he's reviewing whatever they've given us before we'll do that. So he signs off on that. So that's what this is about. Um, the, the third bit is a, identify a granting agreement activity supervisor for each grant. So David is for polls, for example, and somebody else will be for other things. Um, and they will be they're responsible for accepting the work and, and sending it to the executive committee for their approval. And when we get to the next implementation guidelines, you'll see there's a whole set of um, uh, more detailed instructions with regard to the processing of um, accounts payable, for example. So that's that's what I have here. And I guess uh, I'd make a motion that we um, uh, approve the policy as as reflected on the uh, on the screen. And there's probably a date to it, too, <laughs> but I don't have that. So the policy I'm seeing on the screen is from July 9th, 2019. No, no. Nope. <clears throat> March 24th. <clears throat> that was that mm -hmm. one. That is this that is this it, one. Oh, there that is. Okay. Yeah, it's the it's the one that was approved by the policy committee on March twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. I will move that we uh, accept the proposed revised policy on grant submissions dated March twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Second. Second. Very good. I think I heard <laughs> Siobhan get that in. So should that was a motion by R D, seconded by Siobhan. Any discussion on this? issue. Okay, oh, wait, we'll see. Tom, go ahead, Tom. Uh, it's nitpicky, but I was going to say on the first item there, instead of shall approve, uh, should it just reflect the rest of the document and say, um, shall be responsible for approving? There's, it's just a matter of thinking about, uh, um, what's, what's the term? Uh, making the, the document clear for the reader that it's not uh, that all doc, all grants shall be approved, but rather the executive committee should be responsible for approving. Alan, what do you think about that as a friendly amendment? I think it's a good idea, actually, because <clears throat> I can see where somebody will scratch their head when they read that sentence. It might be clear to us. Um, but I think what Tom's suggesting sort of points out that the committee has a responsibility to look at, review, and approve uh, certain aspects and processes about the grant. And I think that's an important thing to try to get across. So I, I, I would accept it as a friendly amendment. I, I think I have to accept it as a friendly amendment since I moved the motion. Oh, yes, you're yeah, right. Yes, you're right. Yes, I, accept. Accept. <laughs> I accept it as the second. Very OK, very good. I guess I I, I meant to ask Alan as the, the chair of the policy committee that brought this up, if he accepts the change and then the if the friendly amendment is accepted by the by RD making the motion by Siobhan being seconded. Any other additional comment on this issue or discussion? All right then, let's 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 vote on the motion. All in favor with aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I hear no opposed. The motion passes. Thank you for this uh, clarifying document. This is this is extremely helpful and a, a part of our maturation process, right? As we grow up here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Sure. Thank you. Right. I thank you both, um, but I am going to actually pass this over to Ray to discuss the financial controls guidelines um, that in part rolled out of this and have rolled out of some previous work that we've been doing over the past months. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, so um, we've, I have a motion that talks about um, uh, the procurement policy the board has adopted um, the millions of dollars in grant funds that we're going to be um, uh, obtaining 
and um, the uh, an audit that's going to be performed on this year's um, activity, for example, and the responsibility for us to being make sure that we can audit the process um, and each and each uh, payment is assigned to its appropriate grant. Okay, and so went through and and. <laughs> And after and after watching all of us and, and David Healy and others that we're where we're trying to annotate uh, our our documentation such that it properly kind of reflects the acceptance of the work, the authorization for the payment, uh, the, the the process by which their accountant gets this, the role of the treasurer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I went through and, and working with uh, the treasurer, working with our accountant, uh, working with people in the finance committee and others, for example, and in, in assembling this that went to the executive committee and uh, is, is also recommended, recommended by the executive committee. There's, there's five, five parts to this, uh, invoices, fixed expenses, uh, credit cards, uh, debit cards and reimbursements. And so, um, you saw this part a, minute, a moment ago about uh, the, the activity, the activity supervisor who has to accept the work. Well, that's that's incorporated in here. Invoices are approved by the executive committee. The activity supervisor accepts the work and they actually annotate the invoice that the work, the date, the work has been accepted, uh, the, the grant, the amount and the grant to which it's to be uh, uh, assigned to. Right. And then signs a thing. It eventually go winds up going to um, the treasurer who uh, makes sure it gets before the executive committee. The executive committee approves it. That is also um, that's also annotated that it has been approved for payment. Okay, so that is that's kind of a process thing, right? We want to make sure we, we're all of our accounts payable are accounted for. Then there's also another category called fixed expenses. You know, we have uh, we have fixed and regular. Uh, and budgeted um, uh, accounts payable, let's say, okay? For example, for example, um, the treasurer's stipend, for example, the executive director's stipend, right? Um, and um, the accountant, I mean, it is a fixed expense, it's budgeted expense, et cetera, et cetera. And for that, the, the requirement is only that the activity supervisor sign off. It doesn't have to go through the regular process of coming through the executive committee, for example, uh, because it's a regular fixed expense, right? Um, and there's a process for doing that and also identifies who's doing that for those particular ones, but also provides that if the executive committee identifies other fixed regular expenses that are budgeted, that they can identify those as, and identify those as fixed expenses and who's responsible for doing that. Um, there is, it, it, and for example, there's also another little bit here about, um, uh, let's see. So, uh, so for, for the exec, just for the executive director, for example, it, you know that you, you basically payment is authorized unless I stop it, right? Unless I tell you no, right? You, you don't have to go through on a monthly basis. You can give kind of give that blanket approval in the front end. And, and then it, should uh, somebody leave or if something else happen, uh, you can you can make a change to it. Or if you have a reason to say no, you can do that. OK, so credit cards. Um, we have a need for the use of credit cards from time to time. And here it sets up a, pro a process by which all of that information is documented. OK, and and only only certain people have the ability to use uh, uh, use credit cards and what the process is. Debit cards, we've eliminated debit cards, not going to use debit cards. The, the accountant in particular, you know, you have a debit card, your your account is exposed. Somebody gets that number, whatever is in your checking account, they can just drain the darn thing uh, once they have that that uh, debit card information, right? So debit cards are no longer authorized. And of course, there are occasions when there are expenses. Well, the executive director has expenses. There may be other people who have expenses. And there's a process by which people can be reimbursed uh, for expenses. And that's laid out here as well. And so that's that's the uh, the totality of this. And I, somewhere in here, I have a, uh, I have a, a motion. So let me let me read you the motion. Then, if um, uh, then happy to discuss it. Okay. So whereas the governing board adopted a procurement policy on November 9th, 2021, whereas CV5 will be the recipient 
of approximately $30 million in grants for which there are uh, strict accounting requirements, whereas CV Fiber will experience its first audit for the 2022 fiscal year, whereas the members of the district and residents expect CV Fiber to manage its funds in accordance with laws, regulations, and accounting principles, whereas the executive committee recommends the governing board adopt the internal financial controls implementation guidelines dated April 25th, 2022. It is moved that the governing board adopt the internal financial controls implementation guidelines dated April 25th, 2022. Second. Discussion, Second. questions, happy to entertain. I, I I heard a second, but I couldn't tell if that was Jeremy or Tom. Who was that seconded? I seconded Tom. I think Tom, Tom got there before I did. Okay, uh, thank you. Seconded also, by Ray, Tom. Ray, could you post that in the chat for uh, Christian uh, so we can include that in a minute? It's easier. Certainly. Please and thank you. Okay, we have a we have a number of hands raised, so I'm going to go through them one at a time here. Tom, go ahead, please. Uh, in subsection B4, um, it, it just calls out the payment for the executive director. And I was wondering if do we want to leave that in such a state that if ever we had another staff member, we'd have to come back and find this document and fix it. Or do we want to just generalize it to CV fiber staff? So, good question. And what, I, what I would say to you is that the, um, under the guidelines here, the executive committee has the ability to uh, identify other for fixed expenses. And I don't think that we we would necessarily have to come back and revise these for that purpose. Tom, do you want to follow up on that, or are you comfortable? No. Um, well, it does call out the executive director specifically in the text, so I just was curious if we wanted to generalize it. But I'm happy to go with whatever the board wants. RD, you're next, sir. I presume. <clears throat> thank you. I presume that the. Uh, Section A um, it, it pertains only to grants that we're going to have. A, a, we either have, which I haven't seen, or we're going to have to design a different internal financial control protocol once we actually start receiving income for our services. That's I, that's my. I, I'm wondering. It's in the form of a question. So and let me see if I understand what you're saying. <clears throat> we have 100 subscribers and they're paying their $50 a month. So we're getting $5,000 a month. If I had, did the math right now, $50,000 a month, boy. And and um, actually that's collected by, that's collected by uh, Waitsfield Telecom and deposited in our bank account. Where's the, where's the, um, I'm not sure I understand then uh, allow me to add a little bit to that, Ray. I, I, I think for as far into the future as we can see right now, it appears that this is going to be consistent with what we're going to do when we have subscribers. Uh, because as, as Ray said, the Waitsfield Telecom will be collecting all of our subscriber subscription fees and handing them to us at which point we decide where and how to disperse those fees, probably in a manner very similar to deciding how we're dispersing our grant monies. Uh, that's a, a little bit in the future at the moment, so there may be revisions at that time. But uh, any anybody else want to follow up on this thread? I, I would, and, and I, what I'd say is that we're certainly going to get invoices. We're going to get invoices from Waitsfield Telecom, for example, and those invoices are going to come from operating revenues, right? And so. Mm -hmm. uh, we get all these subscriptions and then we get an invoice from Waitsfield Telecom and it has to go through the process of being accepted and being uh, being approved by the executive committee for that. Is there a grant uh, a grant to be charged against? And the answer is no, because it, it, it'll come from operating revenue. It's not going to come from it's not going to come from grants. So here we have accounts or grant to be charged, right? Yes, I hope that helps. Yeah, I just uh, I was wondering whether the agreement activity supervisor uh, designation applies to uh, dealing with operating revenue in the same the way that it applies to dealing with grants. Yeah, the short answer would be yes, because uh, Janiel is the uh, contract manager. And uh, so those things will come through, uh, come through her. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. We, we, we intend on maintaining controls um, through the through the executive director, through the executive committee, and through the through the governing board. So we're 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 setting up the procedures for for moving forward with all those controls in place. Uh, I see Even David has had his contractors. If we're paying subcontractors, we're not going to, we're, you know, even no matter what, no matter whether we're paying with grant funds or with subscriber funds, we're not going to pay them if they haven't produced the work uh, to our satisfaction. So that's not going to change regardless of where the money's coming from. That, that, that's correct. Um, let me go to David Went has his hands up. Uh, yeah, just on the, um, the salary, the ED salary. Um, Costs and payments. Um, will the ED ever charge their time as a direct cost to grants, or is it always built into overheads and indirects? Um, and the reason I ask is because, in for my organization working with federal grants, um, when we charge people's time as a direct cost on a project, um, we it requires us then to keep a timesheet. Um, where it shows and demonstrates how much of their time and what time specifically they spent working on that particular project or that was funded by that grant. And that requires somebody to sign off on their timesheet on a regular basis. Um, I don't know if for the executive director it might not apply, but maybe for future employees it would apply. I'm not sure. But it, it, co it comes close because we have uh, right now the executive director is position is 100% funded by a single grant. Um, and we'll probably keep it like that for a few more years um, until we transition into operating revenues. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, but it, in the future, I think that would be a consideration is if they do need to charge their time on different projects, then they might need a timesheet, which then needs oversight and sign off from somebody else. Understood. Understood. And and that may well happen in 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 future as well. It's uh, but we we do have the flexibility, I believe, in this policy to accommodate uh, such an occurrence. Yeah, and, just to weigh in a little on that, um, he's exactly right. Dave's exactly right. Uh, even though there's one grant to be charged, uh, the timesheet needs to reflect, or, or some type of time log needs to reflect and be signed off that it's it's done that way. It doesn't have to be a, you know, a formal detailed timesheet, just needs to, needs to be some type of a log. We could talk offline about that. Very good, thank you, Phil. If, we're, if, we, have, uh, if we have some kind of reporting gap to be filled there, um, that would be good to know. But there is, I, I will add that there is a line item in our reporting up to the VCBB for that grant that includes the executive director. So there, 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 there is a, uh, a line item for that in the grant reporting, uh, but we can certainly continue offline. Thank you, Phil. Any, any other uh, discussion on this item? I don't believe we've had the vote yet, so let, let's take a vote here. All in favor of the motion, uh, aye. 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 Any opposed to the motion? I hear none. The motion passes. Thank you very much, and th and thank you all for the good work on this. This again, these are these are such uh, important steps that we're taking in 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 advance of being told we should have done this. Uh, this is this is a, a a very important part of the process. Thank you. Um, one one note here that we have about the June governing board meeting for our committee chair uh, for our committees to remind everybody that um, we're going to be uh, appointing committee chairs at, at our next governing board meeting. So if there's a committee membership that needs to be uh, followed through on and if the committees can do their work to uh, be ready to discuss uh, positions uh, within the committee, that would be excellent for our June governing board meeting. It's something that we have to do. It's within the statute. Ray, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just want to make sure we uh, people understand the process, and that is that uh, committees uh, elect their chair. Uh, the board ratifies the election. 
Okay, so the board has the final authority with regard to that. And the board also has the authority for appointing committee members, uh, people to the committees, which includes delegates, alternates, members of the community. And so that's, this is also another time if there are folks who want to who want to join committees, this is another time for that to take place. Frankly, it could happen at any meeting, but uh, for the next meeting and the next board meeting, the committees um, during this month should go through the process of electing a chair. Um, vice chairs aren't ratified, but uh, chairs are. Thanks, Ray. Uh, Jeremy, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I just want to point out that that <clears throat> is specific to all committees except the executive committee uh, because the uh, membership in the executive committee is fixed by our governing documents. That's 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 correct. Um, well, we have run through the agenda. Um, 30 minutes early. What a shame. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for all your good work. I'm looking forward to having offline discussions with the with the new delegates and the new alternates that we have. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, there was a there was a uh, a question about some trouble with the audio in the beginning of this. So I, I'm I'm going to get the uh, the recording of this to Orca and uh, Christian. I'll also send the recording of this to you so that so that it will help it'll be helpful for you. Chuck, would you like to do a start off a roundtable, sir? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to add anything else except thank you, everyone, as always. OK. I'll, t I'll take additional round table or a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I, Wait, I, I, I think Alan yeah. had put up that Biden announced incumbents will oh, have yes. a cost access yes. plan. I'm really interested in that discussion. Have Thank you, Linda. Yeah. I'd forgotten all about that. Uh, if, if if I might, I can't find my hand signal quick enough. There, that, 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 there it is, there it is. It's my signal. Reactions. <laughs> go ahead, um, Alan. You've got the floor reactions. anyway. Right. There we go. <clears throat> so what I did was I sent out to everybody by email um, a copy of the Washington Post story from this morning that talks about the plan that Biden and uh, I think it was a total of, what would it say, 37 or something uh, incumbents have agreed to. And what it is is a plan where the private for-profit companies have agreed to provide a $30 a month uh, plan that will that will that will offer 100 megabits per second speed. It doesn't say whether that's symmetrical or not. And it points out that with the subsidies, the low-income subsidies that are currently available through the FCC program that came about earlier this year that for a low-income family, uh, the bill would eventually turn out to be nothing uh, for the cost of service. So uh, there's there's apparently already a lot of pushback from people who think that the incumbent telecommunication providers have been making it very difficult for the FCC to do meaningful changes and to also uh, have the a chairman appointed that that Biden would like to. So people are very surprised that Biden has made this has made this deal with the with the uh, communication companies. Obviously, for us, this is a this is this could be a big deal. Comcast is one of the companies that has agreed to offer these thirty dollar a month plans, and then if you can get a subsidy because of your income, it'll cost you nothing. So it's you know it's just one more thing I think we ought to be aware of as we think about how we're going to talk about the selling of our plan and how we're going to talk with individual possible customers who want to know why they should think about uh, working with us as opposed to an incumbent that's offering a deal like this. Um, well, and I, I, that's a big discussion, but I just wanted to bring it up so that we, we all could begin to think about this. Well, let me go to Siobhan first and then David Healy. So 
are we certain that we can't take advantage of this fund? Well, that's a good question, Siobhan. I've been trying to find that out. I've been doing some Googling uh, as, as we've been meeting, actually. And A, I don't know who all the participants are from the incumbent side. I don't know if it is, for example, a Comcast or Fidian or whatever they're calling themselves these days. Uh, we do know it is, we do know it is, uh, I'm sorry, if it's consolidated, we do know it is Comcast. But it doesn't say anything about whether nonprofit munis or municipal or whatever else kind of entities um, are part of the deal. I would assume not because what's happened is the entities have agreed to offer a $30 a month plan to low income people. And nobody, I don't think, has approached us and asked us if we'd be willing to do the same as well. Uh, and I'm not sure we'd want to do that, frankly, uh, because I'm not sure we could. Uh, Without David, federal money. But, but if they don't serve these areas, then they can't provide that service. I mean, they aren't here. I got to tell you, Siobhan, I, I, you, you're right about that. But we're seeing more activity in Worcester from from uh, some providers who look like they're about ready to to uh, string some fiber our way. We know that people in our town have been contacted by Comcast because they had pe people had had cur had previously called Comcast with questions about getting a faster connection. So Comcast is getting back to them. How many of those people are low income and will qualify with a plan? You have to qualify for the plan, the $30 plan. And then you also, if you want it to cost nothing, you have to ap apply and qualify for the subsidy that the FCC program provides. Okay, David's had his hand up for a while. Go ahead, David. You're, you're still on mute, sir. Evidently, the legislature is making some adjustments to the universal service, not the universal service one, but the um, oh, the the tax that goes on the phone bills and how it can be spent and used for low income people. So I haven't seen a bill or how that works, but keep posted on what's happening out of the is the legislature closes down. It'd be interesting yeah. to see what happens. The other one is the um, the joint committee on the budget did approve ninety five million dollars for continued broadband subsidy, uh, I mean, construction money, which was they had asked 100 million and they got 95. So that's what it is. And then on Friday, the NTIA is putting out its its guidance on how money, the next tranche of infrastructure money can be spent. So there's a lot of activity coming up. Very good, very good. Jeremy, and then we'll go to Ray, please. So one thing I wanted to point out, you're 100% you're right, Siobhan, that if they don't have service, they can't take advantage of this in a way that is going to compete with us. However, say we build first and then they come by later offering plans that don't cost anything. That's a really good way to get people off of our service and onto theirs. And then the money expires. And Wouldn't they you know, still need there, to string the wire? We wouldn't let them be on our wire, would we? If it's no, our uh, cable, poles. we're not going to give them can, access. They can attach, they, they can, we don't own the poles, Siobhan. They right. can attach to the poles just the same. Right. As we so can. they're they're so they're in the same boat that they've been for the last twenty five years, where they have been refusing to string wire. So you know, I, I, I'm not no, I'm not I, I unthreatened agree. by this. I'm very threatened by this. I'm frustrated because I think we should have access to that funding as well. But I I don't I, and I agree we do need to keep an eye on it. I'm just. Uh, they sure aren't coming to orange. So, you know, I don't know what to say about that. Okay, let's move to uh, Ray. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, only to say that um, anyone that uh, is in CB Fibers District and to which we pass that qualifies um, can also get the $30 discount. Period. It's got nothing to do with the cable companies. That $30 is available. It's ACP comes out of some fund, blah, blah, blah. But the $30 applies, period. Where where this has any value is the um, uh, is that now the now the cable companies have access to that. And if they offer a plan for $30, uh, they get the $30 from the federal government. They don't get it from a subscriber. Therefore, they're made whole at the $30 level. 
Um, but Siobhan, you're right. If, if they don't go by your house, then they're not going to get that customer. And so we're not going to let them use our wires. So we have access to the same plan. Are we going to be offering a $30 um, subscription rate? Um, um, uh, stay tuned. But <laughs> yeah, 30, $30, 30 is pretty tough. Any any other discussion here? But the, but as Ray said, there is an existing program that that folks in our district will be eligible for. Um, and Waitsfield Telecom is is already a part of that program, and we'll be piggybacking onto what they're doing with that. Now I'm waiting for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All Second. Right. Seconded by Siobhan. The meeting is adjourned at 7 to 16. I am going to stop recording after I thank everyone for everything you do for CP Fiber. Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Have a great Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Good night. Thanks, all. Good night.